losses in the family that I've, I've had and um, that set me back. But um, <clears throat> I'm in the process of actually redesigning my, my products at the moment. I do want to transition my manufacturing to the United States, which I'm in the middle of doing now. Um, as a result, I've, I've pulled back on my radio advertising and my analytics are showing that my organic uh, numbers are growing and my direct uh, uh, response is dropping off, which is good that I'm growing organically. Awesome. What business are you in? What products are you manufacturing? Uh, electronic Pest Control. It's a product called Plug-in Pest Free. And we've been on the market since 1995. To my knowledge, still, it's the only product in the world that's actually had scientific testing to prove its efficacy. So um, other similar products that make claims don't have the testing that we do. We've actually had scientific testing by uh, two professors that are um, uh, specialists in their fields. Wow. Well, congratulations on that. Who is, is this a industrial product? Is this direct to consumer? Both. It's a domestic product for households and commercial for restaurants and businesses and things like that alike. Uh, and you mentioned radio ads. I'm assuming that's driving retail consumer sales? Yes. And then how are you marketing the commercial side of the application? I haven't got into that yet. I'm about to do that now. I'm going to start reaching out to corporations uh, like supermarket chains, restaurant chains, motel, hotel chains, and things like that. Because um, the commercial product, it, it still to this day, it amazes me. I, I've been into some applications where I did not think the product would work. And within days, the rats are gone. Okay, so what pest does it repel? Scientifically tested are against rats, mice, and cockroaches. So they're the claims that I can make uh, scientifically. But anecdotally, it, it, I've had feedback from most ants, spiders, bats, bees, squirrels, geckos, scorpions. So it does a range of things. But um, once I get my new models launched here, I do want to reach out to some local universities here to pick up where we left off on the scientific testing to expand our claims. That is fantastic. The ability to actually prove your claims is very valuable as a marketing asset. Well, congratulations on what you got going so far. That sounds awesome. Thank you. All right. So let's get another volunteer. Can we have someone who had some numbers to share? Or I will randomly pick people and hope they have numbers. All right, uh, I'll start picking people. George Irvin, you have, can you unmute? I can, and aside from the, the initial lead number, Seth, we didn't uh, get to more than that uh, on, on my uh, situation. Okay. I got six leads in two years, so uh, not great uh, inbound anyway. So um, uh, we started there and then that, that led to all kinds of uh, <laughs> good things to talk about, but not, not more numbers than that. Okay. So six leads in two years. What, what business are you in? I, uh, I'm in uh, financial custody sales, uh, business to business uh, for Fidelity investments. Okay. Um, all right. So my neck of the woods in terms of financial services. So when you say financial custody sales, uh, what is, what are this, what does that mean in English for everybody else? And who are you selling it to? Uh, so I'm selling it to financial advisors uh, that want to be independent and have their own firm or to financial firms uh, that need need the help of our back office. And that's trading, uh, that's custody of assets. So holding your stocks, bonds, mutual funds, et cetera, reporting on them uh, uh, and providing the interfaces uh, and technology for you to access all those things on behalf of your clients. Okay, awesome. So I totally get it. All right. So for example, your back office in a box, back office in a box. <laughs> I like that. Yes, that's very good. So yeah, so when I went independent, when I left AG Edwards, uh, 14, 15 years ago, um, that was exactly what I needed and found. So our so is this I'm a financial advisor. I go independent. I start my own firm. I use you guys to custody as opposed to like Schwab or something. That's exactly right. Okay, awesome. So then you need to, so if our target market for the purposes of this exercise is financial advisors, do you have a specific like size of assets under management that is better for you? Yeah, 150 million and up in AUM is, is my segment that I cover. 
Awesome. And then are you going after financial advisors who, let's say, are at brokerages or at BDs now and telling them they should go independent in custody with you? Or are you going after like RIAs and telling them to switch? I uh, both, but the better leads for us are are the former, the ones that are at a broker dealer in generally a captive environment like AG Edwards uh, yep. or Wells Fargo, into yep. which it evolved. Uh, but th so those are my best leads. Okay, so how are you targeting um, those financial advisors with 150 million plus AUM who are captive now? I. Uh, well, if I get a chance, uh, LinkedIn, uh, I post on LinkedIn with some frequency. I, I use centers of influence uh, in order to get referrals. Uh, in addition to uh, clients, uh, when I have the opportunity and cold calling, uh, and that's really uh, the ways that I'll that I'll generate new leads. Okay, so a lot of those strategies probably apply to everybody here. We're all doing variations of that. We should certainly have another conversation because you shouldn't have to cold call. Um, the six leads that you say came in, are those people who found you? Because I would imagine you've written way more business than six advisors in the last two years. I, I have. Those are, those are folks that came in through our national website or our inbound call team. Okay. So how else are you generating business then? Because six leads isn't enough to sustain you no matter how much AUM they've got. It, so the way that I do it is is what I just said, the, oh, okay. uh, the centers of influence, cold calling, uh, it, and that's it, really. And and LinkedIn when I get the chance. Okay, which isn't as often as you would like, I'm sure. No. <laughs> okay, so we need, this applies to everybody. So we need to get some marketing automation into that. We need some predictable, reliable systems where you can say, I want 10 appointments this week. So therefore, I know how many letters, emails, whatever messages have to get sent out. And then next week, if I want to double that, I know I just turn the system up and get twice as many appointments. Yeah, that would be tremendous. Um, and something we mentioned in our breakout, and you'll recall this from your AG Edwards day, Seth. Um, I have some, uh, some hurdles to overcome between my, my employer and the regulators. Clients, yep. Everybody's got a sales prevention department. Indeed. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you for participating. Um, again, the if you have a marketing system, that, this is a question for everybody. Put the answer in the chat box. If you've got a marketing system that is predictable and reliable, put system in the chat box. If you don't have one, say, I want one. So then we kind of know who's got one and who doesn't. And maybe that affects who we put with who in the breakouts for the next session. Melon wants one. Awesome. Uh, system. Awesome. All right. So let's, I want one. I want one. I want one. Awesome. I want one that compliance will allow. Yes. Well, that's why I originally went independent was not because I, the payout was going to increase. That was a bonus for me. I went because AG Edwards wouldn't, my compliance department would not let me do the type of direct response marketing I wanted. So I went independent so that I could not be hamstrung by archaic, antiquated, paranoid regulations and do what I needed to grow my business. All right, so let's keep going. Let me bring the slides back up. Okay, so what else can we test? We talked about doubling the leads to our web, doubling the traffic to our website. We talked about doubling the amount that become leads. We talked about doubling the amount that become appointments. And we talked about doubling our conversion or our sales rate. There are other ways to move that needle as well. One of which is really obvious is double your prices. Now, you can't necessarily do that overnight. And there are industries that are represented here that are regulated in terms of by law what they're allowed to charge. So it isn't relevant for everyone. But what we have found is when we do incremental price increases, it has not decreased any of our other numbers. So if we normally did... Uh, a six month contract with our clients. When we moved it to seven months, nobody complained. When we moved it to eight months, nine months, 12 months, nobody said no. So we added more revenue by adding more length of time that we would be serving them and more stability to our cash flow. When we have, when I very started, the, when I took my very first marketing client after getting written about in the industry trade journals 15 years ago, 
Uh, and, and my phone started ringing before the internet of advisors saying, how do I do what you did? The very first advisor I took, I was so nervous. I, try, I said, uh, I'll do it for $133 a month, which was way too low. Um, and then the next one, I said, you know what? Dan Kennedy tells me to increase my prices, so I'll do $233 a month. And then I got really brave the next month and went to $433 a month. And then we went to $800 and $1,600, and we kept growing from there. Um, and Dan says, when you, when you finally raise your prices enough that people start pushing back, then you need to go back and improve your marketing to justify your higher prices. Or in Scott's case, maybe you need more scientific studies to, to prove why it's worth the greater amount of money. So you may not necessarily be able to double your prices right away, but can you increase the length of time on your contract? Can you increase incrementally the amount of prices and it will compound because if I go raise our prices 10% a year, it does not take me 10 years to double my prices because it grows on itself, it's compound interest. So we could increase our prices. Can we increase the number of our customers? Can we go get more customers, right? If I wanted to double my revenue and I can't double my prices, but I have hundred clients, could I go get 200 at the same price? Now it's not gonna double to my bottom line because I'm gonna have to have a fulfillment costs, employees and physical product manufacturing or whatever it is, but can I increase the number of customers? Can I increase the number of referrals I get? So George talked about centers of influences introducing him to financial advisors for him to talk to. So can we get more of those centers of influence so that it increases his referral stream? If Scott is trying to get into retail distribution, if he wants his product in Home Depot, can he also get it in Lowe's and double his distribution? He, George talked about posting on LinkedIn and networking on LinkedIn when he gets a chance. So one of, one, one of my friends and mentors is a gentleman by the name of Russell Brunson who invented uh, the uh, largest, fastest growing software as a service company in history called ClickFunnels, which went from zero to 100 million in three years. And one of the challenges I took that Russell did was it was a 12 month challenge, which is normally really long for a challenge. Normally challenges are a couple of weeks or a couple of days. But in that year long challenge, he said, if you will publish every day or Monday through Friday, he said, I guarantee you, you will dramatically increase your sales. He is absolutely right. Now you don't have to create all the content yourself. There are plenty of places that will, resources where you can get topics for social media content, topics for LinkedIn, topics for white papers. Uh, there's some great resources that you can use that will tell you what people are asking about what you do. So here, we'll just, I'll jump into one right now. One of my favorites that we use for research all the time. Hang on one second. So this one, I'll show you the free version. It's called answerthepublic.com. And I'm gonna use Scott as an example. So if you volunteer, you get more stuff because I use you as an example, but I'm gonna say pest control. And Answer the Public is now gonna go search the internet. And it is going to create me a visual mind map of everything people are searching for and in what categories. So who? Uh, so why pest control is important? Why is it important in the food industry? Um, why is pest control essential? Why home pest control? What does pest control do? What does pest control do for mice? What company is the best? So I can go down the rabbit hole and then go to the Google search for are pest control chemicals harmful to humans? So in Scott's scientific research, he's probably got stuff that proves his stuff will repel the roaches and cockroaches and not kill you or your pets. He's nodding, yes. So people are searching for that. Now, here's the interesting thing. I've got software plugged into Google that is telling me the difficulty of ranking for that search is 46 out of 100. So if we talk about Joe and his SEO firm, this tells me how, what are those other related keywords I could look for. And the interesting thing you'll notice when we talk about paying for traffic, there are no ads on this page at all. No one is advertising on that keyword search. 
but there's 39 million results. So to me, I would say that may be a huge opportunity because it is a what's called a long tail keyword search. It's not just pest control chemicals, right? It's our pest control chemicals harmful to humans. And one of the biggest unexploited advantages in marketing is running keyword ads based on people's searches on what are called these long tail search results. I mean, you could take each one of these and write a blog post about this and you'd have content for a year. So I'm gonna try and find pest control where people are advertising, organic pest control. Oh, look at that, there are ads all over the place. Now I've got one, two, three, three ads. I've got Google Shopping on the right, which are also ads. And then I've got, yep. So I got like seven, one, two, three, four, five, six shopping ads and three AdWord text-based ads. So there's lots of people competing here, but nobody's on the longer tail keyword search. The beauty of that is, if nobody searches for it, your ads don't cost you anything. So you have no risk. If no one clicks on your ad, it costs you nothing. So there's an opportunity in every single one of your industries that there are longer tail, more detailed keyword searches that people are actually typing in that you can show up in a significant competitive vacuum for. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, let's keep going. And we can, if someone wants to do a hot seat um, and have me run searches and see how many people are searching for the keyword searches on your business, happy to do that for you. Okay, so double your content publishing. So George talked about posting when he has a chance. So George, is that once a week or once a month? It's general. It's uh, it depends on when I can get approved content. So it it's at least two times a week. It's uh, hopefully five times a week. It really just depends on compliance proof content. Okay, awesome. Totally makes sense. So let's say he's doing it twice a week now. If he ups that to four times a week, do you think that might affect his results? Do you think it might get him more inbound leads? Absolutely. Dan just shared a content tool in chat. Uh, okay, Dan put toolsformotivation.com provides content you can use for blogs and posts. Awesome, thank you, Dan. Can you add a new form of marketing media? So the marketing media is the way you are communicating your message to your prospects. So in George's case, he talked about LinkedIn and cold calling. So those are two different forms of media. Can he add sponsored email blasts? Can he add LinkedIn messages? Can he add direct mail? Could he add print advertising inside of the financial ad, financial industry trade journals? There's lots and lots of different forms of media. Could he do YouTube advertising? There are lots and lots of different forms of media that you might not be using that you could tap into to immediately have a dramatic impact on how many leads are coming in. He talked about six inbound leads in two years. Well, if we add some new marketing media that sends out messages, let's say every week to a target list, we talked about Joe go using LinkedIn to go after architects. Well, that would significantly increase your inbound leads if they are replying to a lot more messages that are getting sent out. Thank you for the compliment, Chris. We'll see you later. Okay, can we add direct mail? Now, thanks to the advent of social media and its increased usage during the pandemic, fewer and fewer businesses are using direct mail, which is a huge opportunity because it means there's less competition. So I used to get five to 10 pieces of commercial slash junk mail in my mailbox every day. Now it's probably down to two or three. Your prospects are the same way. So what that means is that there's fewer credit card pre-approved offers getting mailed, there's fewer everything, which means you have a better chance at your message getting opened and read if you use direct mail, whether you are business to consumer or business to business, it works. 
Can you get your customers to buy more? So can you offer them other additional services to increase the revenue that they generate? We are working on creating at least three new products or services every single year. It's because people are always looking for something new. It doesn't matter how well what you're doing is working. We're human and we have shiny object syndrome by nature. So if they don't get it from you, they're going to get it from someone else. So if you can create more services or even promote someone else's services that you don't do to, their, to your list and get a commission, it's free passive revenue. Can you get your customers to buy more often? Can you increase their frequency of purchase? So I don't know if Scott's pest control device, if I buy it once and never, ever need it again. But if that were the case, could we change it and make it a paid subscription service? Hey, Scott, how much is your residential device? They range currently from $89 to, 240, uh, to 269 Okay, and, so uh, I suggest that people consider replacing them every five years to keep optimal performance. Okay, I love that you're suggesting to replace them. Let's say they're 100 to 100, 250 bucks. Could we do a test where, and I don't know if it's feasible, but what if there was a subscription plan where they got a new one like every year, whether they, whether it physically needs it or not? Or could they be on a payment plan? So instead of $200, they are paying $20 a month, but over 12 months, that's 240 bucks and you just increased your revenue 20%. I'm currently looking at, at ways where I can also generate uh, passive income from a subscription service, but more so to do with the commercial product. Um, I'm in the middle of pros, um, developing back to base technology. So once we put the units into a restaurant, if the, if the device became defective or switched off or whatever, we would get an alert so we could be proactive and mitigate the problem before an infestation comes back into the restaurant. Um, and by that, I would uh, offer a paid service where you know, there's a monitoring fee per month because we've had instances where uh, one jail that we did in Australia, uh, every time that there was a problem, their contracted pest controller kept switching our devices off because he didn't like the product. And when he switched it off, the rats would come back. And then, you know, we'd go and switch them back on, the rats would leave again. So what I'm trying to do is have that back-to-base technology that would alert us before the rodents would come back into the premises. Yeah, I love that. I love. I mean, if you look at, um, like, alarm companies, they make all their money in, they make all the money on the monitoring subscription service. Um, Dan says, Scott, some of my neighbors are having rat problems. Where can they buy your product in Canada? Uh, gopestfree.com. Pestfree.com. I love that domain. Go, gopestfree.com. Oh, gopestfree.com. That is a yeah. great URL. And uh, if you go up one in chat, Courtney, was as we were discussing getting more out of clients, the using a loyalty and reward program. People love to get stuff just for being a member yep absolutely all right love it let's keep going all right could we launch a new service whether it's ours or someone else's could we promote someone else's non-competing product or service so if scott's pest device is great environmentally friendly well do the households that want environmentally friendly pest control also want other green products. Could he sell them green pet stain remover and other products that are not competing at all, but tangentially related? Could you have a contest? People love to be entered to win things. And it's a great way to build a prospect base because if you one person wins, everybody else expressed interest, but didn't win, would some of them buy what they didn't actually win? And the answer is yes, every single time. Um, other things we wanna make sure we do, we want to um, offer specialized solutions. There's a reason why specialists in the medical field get paid more, a lot more than generalists, right? We want to make sure that we are perceived as specializing in what we do. So does that mean that in George's instance, 
he is there, can we create a reason, and I'm sure there are reasons that exist, why if you have $150 million in AUM, you don't want to talk to just anybody. You need to talk to the large market whatever specialist as opposed to, well, if I've got $10 million under management, that might only be 100 clients and it's a lot easier to move that money than it will be if you know there's thousands of clients that I have to move. Can we offer upsells, downsells, or cross-sells of other things? Can we double our leverage? And what I mean by that is, can we sell one-to-many as opposed to one-to-one? -one? Instead of George meeting with one financial advisor at a time, could he do a webinar, have 80 advisors show up, and then at the end of which, the the offer at the end is to their is, is to schedule a time for their um transition analysis or whatever sexy name we come up with with it for and then can we generate 10 or 12 or 20 appointments on the spot at once for george and then he's got those other 60 to drip on for when they're ready so we talked about figuring out your numbers we are now going to put you back in breakouts and you're going to talk about which area needs the most work? Do we need to work on the amount of traffic that we are either getting to our website, our retail store? Is it the amount of messages we're sending, the amount of cold calls we're making? Do we need to work most on how many of those targets turn into leads? Do we need to work on how many of those leads turn into appoint, qualified appointments and how many of those work need to turn into sales? So you're gonna go into your breakouts and you're gonna talk about which area you need to work on the most and then brainstorm with each other. And then we'll brainstorm when everybody comes back.